Finally, we've got our hands on Shimano's GRX Di2. We've been waiting for this group set for a long time. They announced it early this year, and it's only just arrived. I've managed to get riding in on it for a few months now, and I can give you my impressions of what I think. Initially, I was pretty skeptical about the whole GRX thing. From when they announced it to me and they showed me some of the early pictures, to me it seemed like a mishmash of a few parts from the road and a few parts from the mountain bike group sets, and they just kind of loosely hung them together. Uh, but I'm glad to say that's absolutely not what it is. Shimano really have put a lot of work into this while still using a lot of the technical and the engineering knowledge they've learned from both mountain bike and the road to bring us this new collection of parts. But unlike Shimano's other group sets, say Dura Ace or Ultegra, where you just get one continuous parts bin basically, all labelled the same, GRX is more of a family, so it actually goes from quite a low end, the sort of Tiagra equivalent of a 10-speed model, going right up to an 11-speed Ultegra Di2 version, which is what we have here. And what that actually means is you can mix and match parts from all the different levels of the family, um, thus building yourself quite a cost-effective gravel bike. So now I can run you through um, just what you can get on the Di2 level of the group set. So if we start up at the front end, there's the new GRX STI lever, which for the first time incorporates servo wave technology from the mountain bikes. We'll talk more about that later. Then there's lots and lots of different accessory parts available. Uh, there's some inline brake levers, a bit like the old cross top levers we used to get on bikes about a decade ago. But here they integrate with the Di2 lever. They're inline on the hydraulic system, so you get really, really good braking from the tops. Then there are satellite shifters, which again, you can mount up on the tops um, or put wherever you like. Uh, so you can get a really, really comprehensive front end. Lots and lots of different control options, lots of ways to go. Then running down to the brakes, these are just the latest iterations of Shimano's hydraulic system. So we've got IceTech rotor technology going on, really nice, good control braking, whatever the weather. Moving backwards, you can get a one by or a two by option. So it's a one by is a first for Shimano on the road, and it's about time really. You know, it's something they've been severely lacking, especially in cyclocross. Now we've got that option, and that's what I've spec'd here. Running up to the back end, lots and lots of cassette options running up to the huge 1142 we've got spec here. And then of course there's the key to the system, it's the new GRX Di2 rear mech. This is based on the old Ultegra RX Di2 mech, which we've seen for the last couple of years. What we get is we get full electronic control, you've also got a clutch system in there so you get no chain slap, it doesn't drop the chain. You just get a nice smooth controlled ride even when you're riding on really rough surfaces. So now I can give you a little bit more detail on just what GRX is like to use, especially with the new shifters. The hood shape is completely specific to GRX Di2, so it's much more minimal than you see on the road versions, much more sculpted and much more designed so that you can get a really good hold on the tops, reaching for the brake levers. And thus the brake lever has also been redesigned to make sure that it works much, much more naturally when you're braking in this position. And for the first time, Shimano have introduced servo wave onto a road bike. So servo wave has come from mountain bikes and this is just the way that Shimano have been able to make the braking feel a lot more progressive. So instead of having that initial kind of dead zone in braking, they've actually tapered it much, much more. So you, you get a little bit of legal travel and then you're straight into a much more progressive bike. What this all means is that I can get all the braking power and all the braking feel I need when riding on the hoods. I don't have to, like you know, you, you do on other systems, resort to getting down into the drops to do all that braking. And to be honest, if you're not a racer, so you don't spend 90% of your time down in the drops like racers do. If you're just a normal rider, like most of us, you spend much, much of your time up on the hoods. I'd recommend these levers on any road bike. And another neat trick that we're first seeing here on GRX Di2 is Shimano have been doing a lot of work with Garmin recently, and now you can link your Di2 to your Garmin. You do need the Bluetooth antenna, however, and from this, your Garmin head unit can now assign what, what shifting patterns you want, whether you want auto shift, whether you want synchro shift on a two by. On a normal road bike, the hidden buttons on the Di2 shifters, they're up on the tops. On the GRX lever, they're kind of hidden on the inside. But the really, really neat thing is those little hidden buttons you can assign to switch between screens on your Garmin, which is brilliant because it means when you're riding some rough stuff off-road, you don't have to take a hand off the bar to swipe the screen. You don't have to do any of that. You simply click a button and then you can get to the page you need. It's a really, really smart, neat idea. And it's essential that you do have the Di2 with a Bluetooth antenna. And that brings me to the one real niggle that I have with Di2. You know, it's a really, really expensive group set. You only get it on very, very expensive bikes. But without that Bluetooth antenna, you're not unleashing everything that Di2 can do. You can't get that head unit control. You can't assign button patterning. You can't do synchro shift options whilst you're out riding. That all needs to be done at home, plugged in, etc. It's a really, really odd thing to do. So 
I really like to see this antenna included on standard spec on bikes because it's an expensive option. You're talking over £100 to have one fitted, including buying it and buying the, buying the wiring changes that you'd need. Come on bike brands, let's start including this brilliant, brilliant little unit on bikes. So in the few months that I've been riding GRX Di2, I have to say I am seriously, seriously impressed. The rear shifting is super smooth, super accurate, chain retention is brilliant, it's really quiet running, you know, the chain doesn't slap and everything when you're riding on the rough stuff. This new lever shape, absolutely brilliant, braking's wonderful. Only real niggle is because we're still dealing with a wired system, on this particular bike, my bike, the DRT wiring at the back end is a little bit baggy, it's a little bit loose, and I just, I, I'm just constantly, you know, concerned that I might snag that on something, rip it, snap it, or whatever. I'd say that's probably the one advantage that SRAM's new Axis one by systems have. You know, you get that electronic shift in, you get all the same accuracy and everything, but you're just not dealing with these sort of small, fragile wires, which just concern me a little. But coming back to GRX Di2, this new lever shape and this new lever ergonomics simply the best there is for gravel riding and I'd argue probably the best it is just for road riding generally. Alongside the core parts of GRX Di2, you've also got a few different little accessory parts. First off, we've got the satellite shifters, which you can just fit pretty much anywhere. I've decided just to fit them up on the top, so that means when you're climbing, you can just sit up on the flats on top and just shift nice and simply. And then there's the cross top levers, which are a bit like the old levers used to get on cyclocross bikes about a decade ago, but here they're hydraulic, they're wired straight through, and they provide exactly the same feel, exactly the same power as you get from the hoods. These secondary top mount brake levers, you might think aren't really worth the bar space. I was a little bit kind of, you know, I don't know, but I suspect them just out of curiosity's sake. But now I've got them, I find I use them a hell of a lot. It just gives you that different handhold. Of course, when you combine the top levers with the satellite shifters, that means you could effectively spend all day just riding on the tops, braking and shifting safely. Really good if you're riding long distance, multi-day rides, where you just need to relax those muscles, stretch out, have a different ride position. Alongside everything that's been available for GRX Pro, which is Shimano's sister brand, I've come out with a range of gravel specific parts called the Discover range. So on this bike, we've got the new Discover stem, we've got the new Discover bar, but then a real smart bit of the system is this new Pro Discover dropper post. Based on Pro's existing mountain bike dropper post, but now available in a 27.2, so it'll fit most, most gravel bikes, most road bikes. But the real key element of this is a brand new lever design for the dropper, which is, works on a little, little kind of swing system. So when you're up on the hoods, you pull on the lever, it drops. When you're down in the drops, you push on the lever, it drops. Really neat, very clever system. Never thought I'd have that much use for a dropper post when riding gravel, but now I've got it and now it's so easy to use, finding I'm just using it more and more. So overall, I have to say, it's really, really good that we've finally got a gravel specific group set. I think it's something that's been needed and um, fair play to Shimano for, for getting one to market like this. As I've said before, these levers are a triumph and because it's a family more than a group set, there are a myriad of different options out there. So if you're a one by fan, lots and lots of different options. Two by, you haven't been forgotten. Um, when you're moving on to the mechanical systems, again, there are one by and two by options and the clever discovered dropper post, if you're running on a mechanical system, you can have the left-hand shifter set up to operate the dropper if you're running a one-by. Another really neat piece of integration. Shimano should be applauded for this group. It really, really is as good as it looks. That said, there's still room for improvement, as with anything. Firstly, that Bluetooth antenna, I just want that included as standard equipment on Di2. It enables you to get the full use of the system. And then finally, it's the wires. They're kind of slender, they're kind of fragile, the worst thing that could happen when you're out on a ride is just to sever one of those cables, be left without any gears. So Shimano are going to persist with a wired system. I'd love to see that rear cable into the rear mech, armoured in some way, protected more than it is. There has to be some sort of solution out there if they're not going to go wireless like SRAM have. So what do you think? Do we actually need a gravel group set? Or would a road group set with a wide cassette on the back and a clutch mech be more than enough? Or have Shimano really filled a gap in the market? Let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>